Fate back here with you, High Noon Leatherworks, for another leather adventure. And today, we're going to start a new project, and we're going to make a tool holder. So I'm going to make a tool belt holder for my claw hammer. So come on in, and let's get started. What I've done is uh, I pulled out a couple of pieces of scrap. I've got a pre-dyed uh, piece of black leather here that's probably 10 ounce, uh, approximately 9 to 10 ounce piece here that's just scrap. Just pulled it out of my scrap bin. And uh, I've been doing a lot of work at the uh, wooded property and uh, I need just a simple uh, hammer holster or holder that I can put on my belt and uh, I can take my hammer out and lay it down if I don't want to carry it around but if I need it handy I need something to put it in and keep it right there next to me while I'm working so what I want to do is I just want to throw something together here pretty quick uh, something that I can use uh, something that's going to last for quite a while and again it's made out of scrap um, and uh, it'll take a long time for this to wear out so uh, I'm sure it'll be good for years to come so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to square up these pieces of leather here um, I'm going to use my grid on my self-healing cutting mat and I'm just going to go across the bottom and start there and the actual measurements are not that critical as much as uh, just making sure that it's square or that I start out with my leather being square so that it looks fairly decent So I'll square that edge up on the left hand side, then I can turn that over. I know my bottom and that side that I just cut is square, and I'll turn that over and put those on my grid. And then I'll straighten out the other side and square it up. You can use a small square also. Do the same thing. You don't have to have a cutting mat with, uh, with a grid on it, but I like to use it. It makes quick work of it. So I'll turn that 90 degrees and I'll square up the top. So there's my scrap pieces that I ended up with. I'll get rid of those. And now I have my backer piece that I'm going to actually put on my belt. Uh, and it's nice and square to start out with. Then I'll take my looped piece that's actually going to hold the hammer like so and I'll square it up so the same thing I'm gonna there's nothing square on this piece of leather at all no sides that are square so I'm gonna let it hang over just a, about a quarter of an inch And then I'm going to square that first side up with my grid. Again, you could do this with a square. Now I can turn that 180 degrees, put it on my grid. And I want this to be fairly thick or tall. So I'm not going to cut it down like to an inch. I'm going to go ahead and make it as tall as I can for this piece of leather 
and it looks like it's going to be about an inch and three eighths is what I'm going to have to work with here. So I'll make sure that that's on my grid. Make my first pass there with my blade. And then there's the scrap that I end up off of that edge. <coughs> now I need to find out what my length is going to be. So I'm going to lay my hammer on here. And the end of the handle is bigger, so I want to make sure it's at least that big. So I'm going to use that end. So that I got plenty of room to fit that hammer in there. And then as that slides down, I want to make sure that it's still small enough that it holds the hammer head. So I got plenty of room there for that to fit in. So I'll just mark it. this side and then lay it back on my grid and I can square it up. I'll square it up on the left end first. I'm only taking off about eighth of an inch is all I took off and then I can square it up with my grid again on my mark and then I can cut that square and then that's what I had left over so here's my second piece squared up. I'm going to bring it up. Oh, probably let's do three quarters of an inch from the bottom. And I think what I'll do is just to make this look a little bit better is I think I'll go ahead and give the edges just a little bit of a round edge just to get rid of that square and again I'm just using this little piece of plastic thing that I saved so that I can make circles and it's got a really nice radius for round edges. And I just square up both sides of it. On my leather when I do that. And I'll show you here what it turns out like. It makes, it makes a great radius for an outside or an inside corner and then I'll just take my knife you'll notice I'm taking several cuts instead of just trying to radius with one cut you can do that however you like I do it both ways sometimes just depends on what I'm cutting and how big my radius is. The bigger the radius, the easier it is to make with one cut. When you get these small radiuses like this, I find it much easier for me if I cut multiple cuts around that radius. So you can see now that I've got rounded corners 
instead of just a square pointed corner. I'll move those out of my way. So that takes care of that piece and I'm going to do the same on this piece just so it, it looks nicer. Again, it's, it's just scrap um, and it's just something I'm going to be using uh, outside. It's not uh, a show piece or anything. It's just a holder for a tool that I'll be using. Again, I use those square edges on that piece of plastic. Again, it's just junk. Look like it came off of some kind of lamp or something that I was going to throw away. Obviously, I threw the lamp away or whatever it came off of. So I just kept that so I could use it. I've got all kinds of stuff like that. You could use um, tape rolls. I use those a lot. Like uh, the inside of a masking tape roll or anything like that will work. So I'll just go around, do the same thing, cut, make multiple cuts around that radius until I get it rounded on something this small. Depending on how big your radius is, it's going to depend on really how many cuts you're going to need. So there's that one that's rounded off. So now I'm ready to figure out where I need my holes for my piece of leather to mount on to the, the backing. So uh, I think I'll real quick take my beveling tool and just bevel the front. And would you have to do this? No. Wouldn't have to have to do any beveling or anything for this kind of thing it's not going to be uh, like I said it's not a showpiece or a holster or finished thing like that that you know anybody else is really going to pay any attention to but me but I could throw a little bevel on there it won't take very long at all and that'll clean it up a little bit same thing on this one just on the front, don't need to bevel the back at all. Now this black piece that I chose out of my scrap bin is pretty stiff. It's, it's much more stiff than this piece. So that gives me a really good backer. It, it'll have a tendency to stay nice and flat especially when I put it on my belt so that'll make this nice and rigid I'll get that out of the way and then I can go ahead and I'm gonna go up three quarters of an inch from the bottom And on this side over here, I can go ahead and mark where I want my holes. I'm going to make a small mark on the edge at three quarters of an inch so I know exactly where to go back to. Same way on this edge. And with that already being black and this being black ink, you don't even hardly see it. I mean, you just barely see a little shiny spot there. And then I'm going to come in. I'm going to use uh, rivets. And those are 3 8 of an inch in diameter. And they can be close to the outside. So I'm going to come in uh, a quarter inch. For my rivets and then I'm going to go up a quarter inch come in a quarter inch at the top 
and down a quarter inch just so those holes are going to uh, be symmetrical then I can take just use this little cutting board and I saw someone doing that on another channel that I was watching and uh, I was amazed at how well it worked so I had to go get one and so far I've been using it quite a bit and I haven't noticed I'm using my claw hammer to hit on my I haven't noticed it dulling my punches or anything it seems to do really well And these are very inexpensive. Um, you can buy them in different thicknesses, different sizes. But I just got this one at Walmart, I think, for $4. So you use it over and over and over. And once you get it all tore up, which would take, I would think, years, then just throw it away and go get you another one. It's not going to be that expensive. So I'll put my piece back on my marks that I made at 3 quarters of an inch. I'm going to mark my holes on this side of my black piece. I'm going to turn this 180 degrees, put it back on the marks at three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to make my marks through those same two holes so that I know they match on the other side of my black piece. So I can go ahead and punch those. And again, this is a little bit thicker. Not a lot than the other piece, but it's a little thicker, a little harder, stiffer leather. You see it, it punches through on this uh, cutting board, this poly cutting board. It, it punches through a real nice hole. Look, there's the back. I mean, it makes a real nice sharp hole in there. I like it. So there's my four holes in there. I've got my two holes on this end. Now all I need is my two holes on this end. So all I'm going to do is rotate that, line that up with the other end, and I'll rotate it or fold it over backwards. Take my pen make my marks on the other side for my punch so that way I know I have it exactly in the same spot as the other side so I don't have to measure both sides I can just go ahead and measure one time and then keep using those holes over and over to punch my holes in my pieces that I'm going to use. So I've got my holes here that match and I've got my holes over here that match. So I'm ready to set. Now again I could go ahead and dye this uh, piece here to match this. Um, I'm, I'm not going to dye it or anything. I could but I'm just going to leave this contrasted color and uh, put my rivets in then we'll get to uh, cutting the slits for the belt so I'll get my rivet setter pull out four 
rivets and four caps. So there's my four rivets and my four caps. These are three-eighths rivets, by the way. So I'll take my first rivet and I'm going to place it through the back of the black piece. Put my top piece on. Set my rivet on my anvil. Put my cap on. And I normally give these three swift wax with my mallet. And you notice I am using my poly cutting board so that I have a fairly hard surface instead of hitting onto my cutting mat. I'll do the same with the second hole. Pop my cap on. Make sure it's on the anvil. Give it three swift whacks. There it is on the back. And there it is on the front. So now I can turn it over. And I can do the same on the other side. Put it through the back. Set it on my anvil. Pop my cap on. And then use my setting tool. These rivets are fairly inexpensive. Um, you could sew this if you wanted to instead of uh, using rivets, but I'm just doing this so that I can have it pretty quickly, and these rivets are going to last for a long time. If one pops out, uh, I can replace it very quickly. Here I pick up a hammer again. So, there's the piece, you can see how now this wants to naturally curve on the bottom. And this piece we can manipulate. It's, it's not as stiff as this piece. So you can see there's our pocket for our hammer. Fits in there perfectly. So now I've got a nice quick access off my belt to my hammer. The next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and put my slits in this piece for my belt. And I'm going to put those in um, make a two and a quarter inch slit a half inch down from the top half inch in from each side and I'm just making just a little mark there with my pen again that's black so it's not showing up it's gonna cut out anyway so I'm gonna go two and a quarter inches half inch in two and a quarter inches half inch in so there's my marks and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this punch, which will cut me a groove, and that groove is 5 eighths long, 
and I'll cut that at the top right on that mark make sure that I'm good and square to the side and I'll do the same on the other side and you can see how I'm kind of moving that back and forth a little bit I'm rocking that as I hit it so that it goes through there evenly I'll do the same on the bottom part and you can pretty much feel it when it pops through And then what that does is that gives you those four slits and then all you have to do is take your straight edge and your knife and connect those. Make sure you have a good sharp blade, a nice flat straight edge, and then you can just pop those out, and then there's your slit for your belt loop, or for your belt. And I, turn, I can either turn that around or do it on this side. It's going to be easier if I turn it around since I'm left handed. And that gives me more leather over here to hold my straight edge on instead of holding it off of the edge down there. Another nice thing about cutting on this cutting board or a cutting mat is you can really feel when you get through that piece of leather now I'm gonna have to touch this side up because I got turn this around going to touch that up a little bit and there's both the slits for my belt to go through so now I can put my belt through that and then hang my hammer or whatever tool you'd want to make that for. So now I've got something that I can, I won't lose my hammer and keep it right next to me while I'm trying to use it. So quick, easy, made out of scrap. Um, something that I can use probably for years, I would say. Again, if, if you have any issues with, uh, one of these rivets popping out or something you can always replace it within a minute or two so it's not going to take very long to replace it if you need to but that gives you a really good idea how that turned out and this was all done in real time so that's how long it took to do the actual project alright thanks for coming along for being with me for the tool holster project. It was quick, simple, made out of scrap. 
uh, something that I could use for years to come. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Please, as I always say, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>